How's it going everybody and welcome back to the vlog. So when I got my DJI Mavic, I did my first visit, my first video on the impressions of the size and what, how cool it was. And in that video I had mentioned that because of that size and you having that stabilized camera on the front, you might be able to use it as a stabilized camera. Just some thoughts that were running through my head at the time until sometime this year or earlier this year, someone actually came out with a grip that will hold your DJI Mavic so you could use it as a stabilized camera. So, here we are. I'm not gonna let this one slide again. I have designed, out of parts in my house, a stabilized camera setup for the DJI Spark. Now, I know a lot of you guys already have your 3D printers and a lot of you have engineering degrees that'll come up with something a lot better than this one. For guys like me, that have a lot of stuff running around the house, this is all I use. I use a GoPro wrist wrap, a selfie stick, a GoPro handlebar mount, and a camera, or actually a cell phone mount for GoPro accessories. And we are going to be able to hold it down for lower shots. We're going to be able to kind of bend this back to kind of get higher shots. And we're going to be able to adjust the phone so that we can get the right angle so we can see what we're doing. But I really don't have a lot of options when it comes to this. It would probably be better if I had a pistol grip or something on the back so I can do that with it. But for now, we're just going to test it like this. And we're going to have to kind of manage my wrist to, to get the best out of it. So... Let's fire this up and see if it works. I have removed the props, guys, just in case you are trying this at home. Always remember to remove the props if you're playing around with something because you don't want those to spool up while attached to this. And we are currently connecting to the DJI Spark using the Wi-Fi connection, so you don't need your remote control. This is gonna work in situations where you probably can't fly your Spark. So while the Spark is amazing and it will hold itself very steady, if you're indoors, there may be people who are uncomfortable with you flying your drone around. So. If you don't have um, a stabilized camera or something with a stable sta image stabilization built into it, you might be able to, be able to use one of these to kind of get the same effect without flying your drone around. So let's fire it up. Let's run around with it. Let's do some jumps with it. Let's see if it actually works as a stabilized camera before something like this actually comes out and you go spend your hard-earned money on it. So let me get it fired up and we'll see how it works. So it was super bright in the front. So I moved to the back where um, there's some shade from the trees to get this started. Um, so. Just as a disclaimer, I've never used any type of stabilized system. Only thing I've ever had were uh, devices with image stabilization built into it. So I'm gonna do my best to try to get the most out of the camera from what I've seen from other guys doing online. And that's kind of controlling my movements, my steps. Um, and then I'm gonna just do some straight out running and jumping to see how this thing will actually stabilize that video. So I got it all fired up. <clears throat> Let's get into it. Let me start flight. Let's go out of that. Okay, so it is now in uh, Wi-Fi connection. So you can see those little dots for um, thumb control. And I'm going to hit record. Okay, right now it's set up, I guess, relatively parallel. I'm going to tilt back to tilt this back a little bit so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to just start walking again. I'm going to use the LX10 as a comparison um, so you can see the difference in how my extremely bouncy gate is stabilized by the uh, uh, spark. And also, while I'm walking, as you can see, the spark is probably doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So we'll see how that comes out. Right now, I can see already the spark is doing its job. I see almost no movement in the spark video where I see a lot of bounce in the LX10 video. So we're gonna do a turn. For this turn, I'm gonna to try to do it as smooth as possible. Because what I noticed with the Spark is, I think it uses image stabilization to try to compensate for the fact that it does not have a third axis of stabilization. So now I'm gonna walk a little less bouncing. I'm gonna to try to walk a little less bouncing. I'm gonna crash down a little bit, bend my knees. Walk smooth as I can. And again, I'm seeing those big jumps from me trying to turn this path and keep the spark stable. Come up. Try to get some higher shots. And the spark is not really level when I go up high, so I'm going to have to tilt that up a little bit. There you go. And this is about at eye level or forehead level. All right, I'm gonna come back down. 
then to get those lower shocks. I'm gonna tilt the spark so that it is parallel to the ground and my grip is like so. Just tilt the screen back so I can see what's going on here. And again, I'm gonna try to keep it as stable as possible. All right, let's get it up about waist height. Actually, I'm a little bit higher than my waist, I'm probably like a little less than chest height here. And what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna jog. And I'm gonna try to keep my wrist as straight as possible. This is probably much better if I had like a pistol grip for this. Maybe I can get somehow design some kind of alternate grip so that my wrist isn't so uh, ergonomically twisted for this. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a fast walk. Oh yeah, I can see the bounce in the LX10. I can see a lot of bounce. I'm slowing it down. Again, we're gonna turn as slow as possible, smooth as possible. Try not to let that compensation of the digital stabilization pick up on the movement. Slow as possible. Okay. Now, let's do a couple of jumps. I'm gonna have a background shot right here. I'm gonna use this tree. I'm gonna use this stuff in the distance. I'm gonna just jump up and down and see if uh, Spark catches a lot of movement in the jump. So here we go. One jump, two jumps, three jumps. So, can't wait to get this in the editing software to see how it turns out. But what I can tell you right now is that the Spark is doing a great job of stabilizing the video. If I'm moving slow enough, I get very little movement in the picture compared to the LX10 you can probably see is kind of moving all around with every step that I take even though it has image stabilization built into it um, but again my grip and this uh, setup that I have here probably isn't the most ergonomic or best way to hold it to try to keep out a lot of that motion if I had something that was like a more like a pistol grip like this where I'm holding it if I can do this without dropping my whole rig hold it more like this instead of how I'm holding it now it probably would take out a little bit more of the motion in the camera. All right, so I'm gonna break this down and I'm gonna get it into video and then I'll come back with some final thoughts. So I think there's some potential there. I, I, I really think that a lot of the, the jitters that you see in it are just from me walking um, at, and I have a very aggressive or very hard bounce in my gait so um, me trying a little harder to uh, walk a little bit more stealthy would probably help with some of the bounces that you saw on it but when I was looking through the screens comparing what I saw on the LX10 versus what I saw on the, uh, the iPhone the spark was actually like 75% better it was taking out so much movement um, but the downside to it was uh, for the for the yaw I think there is some image stabilization built into the spark to compensate for the fact that it doesn't have a third axis third axis of stabilization so it's trying to slow down those quick movements that you may give it when you give it yaw and when I was doing turns you can see that it almost looked almost robotic as it was turning so um, didn't cost me anything to build it I built it out of parts that I had in my kitchen cabinet there um, from all the other GoPro action cameras and selfie sticks I had around so um, I've always wanted one of those $300, $400 gimbal stabilized, stabilized gimbal systems, but I think I'm going to pass for now until I get into something or getting a little bit more professional with my uh, content creation. For the meantime, this will actually work, I think, if I need a stabilized setup. And I haven't even tried it with the Mavic yet, which actually has that third axis of stabilization. So. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Please leave some comments below. Um, I will get back to you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the vlog. And, uh, you know, again, guys, I appreciate everything you do. Please like, subscribe, and share if you like my content. And I'll get back to you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.